In question number six, in a binary star system, two stars of mass m and 3m separated by distance d rotate about their common center of mass. If v is the relative velocity of one star with respect to second, then value of v is. First, we'll try to calculate the angular velocity of the system of stars about their center of mass. And then, to have the answer for the relative velocity of one star with respect to other, we'll just write down omega into the relative distance. That will be the method here. Fine. So, this mass being m and this is 3m. This distance being d. So, from here to here, it will be how much? it is d by 4 this will be the center of mass force on any one of the mass i'm taking this one as the reference i would write it down as g m into 3 m divided by d square must be total centripetal force here it will be 3 m omega square into r that is d by 4 here this 3 m will cancel out and i'm having this as 4 gm this one is 4 gm divided by d cube square root this is the value of angular velocity now the relative velocity of this one with respect to this mass it will be simply omega into this distance so v will be it is 4 gm d cube square root into this distance so here it will be d square so i am getting this answer v as 2 root under gm by d okay so for question number six i'm having option two as the correct answer now we shall proceed to question number seven in question number seven a point mass m is placed at center of a sphere of radius 2a reason of r that is greater than a and less than 2a is filled with material of density rho is equal to alpha by r if the field inside the reason r that is greater than a and less than 2a is constant then value of alpha is i'm just explaining the question one more time this is the spherical reason this being the radius a and this one being 2a at this point we are having a point mass capital m fine and this reason is having a density that actually varies as given here in this equation so feel inside the region in fact we need to calculate the feel inside this region and that's been given as the constant so in accordance with that we need to evaluate the value of alpha i would say feel at any point here in this region let this distance being how much it is r so first i need to calculate what is the total mass that will be included in this region for that I'll write it down as 4 pi x square into dx. This is the volume here. And the density, it was alpha divided by x. So this is the dm. I need to integrate this portion from x is equal to a to any general point r. This will be the total mass enclosed within this region. So that will come out to be 4 pi alpha, this is 4 pi alpha x dx. So its integral will be x square divided by 2 from a to r or m enclosed. It will be 2 pi alpha, this is r square minus a square. Okay. And already there was mass m at the central point here. So the field at this point at a distance r from the axis would now be it is E would be equal to G M R square plus G 2 pi alpha R square minus A square divided by R square. Fine. So it's been said that field here it is coming out to be constant. So we need to find the value of alpha there. So I would say it is g that will be taken as common here. From this portion, I would say 2 pi alpha minus 2 pi alpha a square divided by r square 
and plus m divided by r square. This whole of this portion is coming out to be constant. It simply means these two part taken together, they must come out to be zero. Then only this is the only part that is the constant that will remain in the equation. So we are getting this answer as m minus 2 pi alpha a square will be 0 and from here value of alpha to be equal to m divided by 2 pi a square. Got it? So looking onto the option, option 4 is the correct answer for question number 7. Now let's proceed to question number 8. Here in question number 8, a rod of mass m and length l is suspended with the help of two strings as shown. A point mass m has to be suspended from the rod at a distance x from left end such that a strain in both the string is same. The value of x is. For the given situation, if the strings that is actually connected at the two different ends of the rod, let's say the tension here is T2 and here it is T1, then it's been given that the strain on both of these two strings are same. So for here it is T2 area being 2A must be equal to strain into Young's modulus. Similar is the case for this one. I would write it down as T1 divided by A strain into Young's modulus. Young's modulus and strain for both of these two given strings are same. So definitely we shall have here T2 divided by 2A must be equal to T1 divided by A or T2 is equal to 2T1. Fine. And one more thing that is T2 plus T1 it must be equal to 2mg. 1mg at this point and the other being here at this point. This distance was already given to be x here. So I would write it down T1 plus T2 must be equal to 2mg or t2 is equal to 2t1 so effectively t1 is equal to 2mg by 3 and t2 is equal to 4mg by 3. Now we shall write down the torque about this point. So I would say torque because of this mass mg would be capital Mg into X because of this mass it would be capital Mg into L by 2 must be equal to T1 into L. T1 was how much? It is 2 Mg divided by 3 into L. Mg will cancel out here and we are having X is equal to 2 L by 3 minus L by 2. It is 2 L by 3 minus L by 2. Or I would say x would be this part being 4L minus 3L. It is coming out to be L by 6. Got it? So for question number 8, we are getting option 1 as the correct answer. Now we shall proceed to question number 9. Here in question number 9, a spherically symmetric gravitational system of gaseous particle has mass density rho naught for R less than or equal to capital R. A test mass can undergo uniform circular motion under the influence of gravitational field of the particle. Its speed v as a function of distance for r is equal to 0 to infinity from the center of the system is represented by. In fact, uh, we shall be taking the two different cases here. First, we are considering if the mass m is rotating at a distance r here that is greater than the radius of this spherical mass system. So I would say the velocity V would be equal to root under G capital M divided by R. So obviously it is inversely proportional to square root of R. So we shall have something like this one or this one. Now let's think of which one of these will satisfy the equation for R greater than 0 and less than capital R. So what we will calculate here. Uh, if I am taking now some distance at a distance small r, I need to evaluate the total mass that will be enclosed within the region first. So it will be m 
I would say it is as 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho naught. Fine. So the field at this position it will be g into 4 by 3 pi r cube rho naught divided by r square and effectively it is coming out to be 4 pi g rho naught r divided by 3. This is the gravitational field strength at this point. So the net force towards the center it would be 4 pi g rho naught r divided by 3 into m naught that is the mass of the circulating body here. It must be equal to mv square divided by r or m naught here v square divided by r. So this one will cancel out and I am having this value v as square root of 4 pi g rho naught by 3. This r and this r, these two part taken together will be r square and square root of that portion will be r itself. So what I am getting here, the circulating or in fact orbital speed inside the region of a spherical portion would be directly proportional to r. So this will be the appropriate graph here. So for question number 9, we are getting option 3 as the correct answer. Now we shall proceed to question number 10. In question number 10, a uniform disk of mass capital M and radius r is placed on a horizontal surface. Gravitational potential at the center of the disk is. Very simple calculation here. We shall first consider the small circular segment here at a distance x. Its mass will be how much? It will be dm must be equal to capital M divided by pi r square into 2 pi x dx. This is the value of dm here. So potential because of this small ring at the central point, I would say it is dv is equal to minus of g dm that is m divided by pi r square into 2 pi x dx and this radius it will be x. If I will integrate this portion from x equal to 0 to capital R, I will be getting the total potential at the central point. So V at the central point here. It will be minus G capital M by pi R square. This one will cancel out. It is 2 pi. Integral of dx will be how much? It is R. So this will cancel out and I am getting V as minus 2 g capital M divided by R. So this is our answer for the potential at the center. So which one of the option is matching here? It is option 2. That is the correct answer for question number 10. Now we shall proceed to question number 11. 